Good evening, and welcome to another second look. Tonight we'll be talking about a film shot in 1982, but released in 1984. The film was entitled The Return of the Living Dead. It was directed by Dan O'Bannon. The film takes place in Louisville, Kentucky. A young man named Freddie has recently got a part-time job at a medical supply warehouse with his uncle Frank. Frank starts showing his nephew the ropes, but then later Freddie asks him, Frank, what's the weirdest thing you ever saw here? And his answer was, have you ever seen the movie Night of the Living Dead? That movie was based on a true case. He starts telling Freddy the real story of what happened behind the movie Night of the Living Dead. He explains that the guy who made the movie changed all the facts around. Frank starts telling Freddy the true story and he concludes the story by telling him that those bodies were stored in giant canisters and some of them were sent to the basement of their medical supply warehouse. Frank offers to show Freddy the canisters up close and personal. He guides him down to the basement. He shows him into a dark corner which reveals a bunch of the giant drums he talked to him about. He opens one of the lids revealing a window and beyond that window, tightly sealed, is one of the corpses. Freddy asks Frank if the canisters leak and Frank, having a false sense of confidence, tells Freddy that they were made by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and hits one of the canisters really hard on the side and to their surprise, a strong toxin hits them straight in the face and spreads throughout the room. After being knocked out from the toxin, they wake up only to find that it spread throughout the entire building, causing everything that was once dead to move around again, almost as if it was alive. The butterflies on the display, the split dogs, even the cadaver that was locked in a different room, all started to move. Not knowing what to do, Frank and Freddy call the head boss of the medical supply warehouse, Bert. He comes over, and he's just as puzzled as they are. The three of them manage to collect up everything in the warehouse that was affected by the toxin. They wrap them up in plastic bags, then put them on a giant stretcher. They take them over to the crematorium across the street. In high hopes of a favor out of friendship, Bert eases his way into the crematorium and asks his old friend Ernie if they can use it to solve their problem. Now having told Ernie the whole situation, he agrees to help them. They load everything in and watch it burn but little do they know that the worst is yet to come. In an effort to destroy the items from the warehouse, the toxin makes its way up and out of the chimney of the crematorium into the clouds, causing an acid-like rain which pours everywhere, including a nearby cemetery seeping into the ground and causing the corpses to come back. And now for questions and theories. Due to the fact that there are some spoilers in the rest of this video, I ask those who have not seen The Return of the Living Dead to turn this off right now Find the movie, watch it, and then finish the rest of this afterwards. Question. Why did the cadaver run past Frank and Freddy and went straight to Bert when they unlocked it out of that room? Probably because by that point Frank and Freddy were already exposed to the toxin that hit them in the face out of one of those canisters. Bert wasn't. Zombies only go after live human brains. By that point they were already under the process of becoming zombies. Zombies don't attack other zombies. Question, why did Frank and Freddy forget that the guy who made Night of the Living Dead changed all the facts around? When they were trying to kill the cadaver, they tried destroying its brain numerous times, and they were curious as to why it wasn't working. Frank had stated that it worked in the movie, but he had told Freddy earlier that they changed all the facts around. How come they forgot? Question, why did the tar man attack Tina but not attack Frank and Freddy? Earlier in the film, after the toxin knocked out Frank and Freddy, the tar man broke loose. Why did it not attack them? It was still in the basement where they were. But later in the film, Tina went down into that same basement and the tar man went after her. Probably for the same reason that the cadaver didn't attack the both of them. They'd already started becoming zombies little by little. Zombies don't attack other zombies. Question. After encountering the tar man, why did the gang run back into the cemetery and not just take the car and get out of there? For two reasons. One, the driver had just gotten eaten by the tar man. And two, the car wouldn't start due to the acid rain. Question, why did Suicide and Scuzz not become zombies after they got eaten? But Trash did.
In a traditional zombie film, if someone gets eaten by a zombie, they become one. But this wasn't based after a traditional zombie film. In a traditional zombie film, a zombie will eat any part of a person's body. In this one, they only were after the brains. Probably because when they got eaten, they were inside. When Trash got eaten, she was out in the cemetery where it was still raining the, quote, acid rain. Maybe that's why she became a zombie. Question. When they tied the half zombie to the stretcher, why didn't they take that to their advantage and try different methods of disabling it permanently? Like water, some other chemical they had in the building, even electrocution. It worked in the second Return of the Living Dead film. They considered acid, but they only knew that they had a small amount of it, and it wouldn't be enough to destroy all of them. Question. Why was the army's big plan to get rid of all the zombies in the trioxin a giant missile? The army was the one who accidentally shipped those to the medical supply warehouse. They knew what would happen once it leaked, and they knew what the result would be. Why didn't they take time to devise a better plan? They were waiting for them to hatch. They could have come up with some kind of counter chemical that would have made all the zombies become regular corpses again. But instead they were just waiting to blow it all up. Wouldn't they have known that it would just spread all over again? Question. Why didn't they do a direct sequel to this movie? Why is it that the second Return of the Living Dead film had nothing to do with the first one? It was an entirely new story, and was set up as if the first one didn't exist. But two of the main characters were the same actors as the first one, Frank and Freddy, except in the second one their names were Ed and Joey. But the same initial thing happened to them in the second one. Why didn't they just do a direct sequel? This has been Second Look. I hope this information has been insightful. Stay tuned for the next Second Look. Thanks for watching. I'm MJ Kelly.